A three minute benchy? Yeah, wow. I was able to do a three minute. And, and I, for that, I didn't have a duct yet, so I was just literally holding a CPAP blower at it. <laughs> cool, darn it, cool! <laughs> that's awesome. So I guess that's the biggest challenge when you're doing the super fast benchies. Is you just, Good the plastic cooling. is so hot and, and it's just gonna blow Yeah, and, and you, you can't, it. like, you've gotta have got to have a ton of capacity for cooling because if the layer time changes your cooling capacity has to change um, and it has to change immediately um, but also you need a really flat laminar flow because you don't want to you know cool your hot end right right you don't want you it get, to you don't want you your hot end runaways, to be fighting it yeah and, and you don't want to cool your bed uh, it's 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 difficult that's probably the hardest part because you can get you can just buy a, a high flow hot end but right. good luck printing at high flows and with usable results. Um, when you do that, you do you use an enclosure to try and like keep the heat? Are, are you worried about drafts at all? If you're um, like literally... This is PLA, so right. not for this. Uh, okay. But I, I am working on an enclosure and I'll publish my files when I'm done. Um, cool. I'm, working for a I'm working on a door uh, and I'm working on a top hat for this printer, which doesn't currently exist. Nice. So we've, got, we've got one for the 300CLs. Uh, but not for the mini yet. So it's interesting. So you've got like super rigid. You've got the, the CNC machined aluminum parts. But you're still running. You're still running what like six millimeter? No. Yeah, six mil belts. Six belts. Okay. Um, I don't. I haven't noticed a problem with the six mil belts. Yeah. Uh, and you need to. So so you've got it. You've got you know competing problems there. You go to a nine mil belt, then you're going to put a lot more force on the parts so you can get more deflection. And yeah. already not running these double shear and not running these double shear, even with six millimeter belts properly tensioned, you're already getting deflection. So if you go to a yeah. nine millimeter belt, sure, you might have a more rigid belt, but then you're just moving the problem elsewhere. So, so you'd have to put the either call in double shear. I feel I see so many printers where they're they've kind of gotten away. They're they're so over engineering things. They're like double driving the belts and stuff like that. And they're trying to go heavier and heavier in belts and using more and more current on the stepper motors. But see, you also need to figure out like where is your actual problem versus your perceived problem. Right. So you're like, okay, I need more torque. Let me put bigger belts on here. But then you're you know, okay, but what if it, the problem is rigidity? You're not getting good tooth engagement because your 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 stuff's flexing, and so yeah. then if you if you don't get that tooth engagement, then you're losing out on the torque that your six millimeter belt could provide. Yeah. yeah. And like I, you're only using what is that 15 by 15 extrusion? Right, but the panels yeah. provide like 90 uh, but the percent. Panels yeah. 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 So, uh, I built a print a. a like a 300 millimeter cube printer and um, a BLB cube, and like the the frame is insane. It's using 20 by 40 everywhere. The thing weighs like 50 plus pounds, and it's so sadly it's it's so over engineered for a frame. Like I don't need to be able to stand on my printer sideways. And it but probably it, still isn't as rigid uh, that's as. The thing. as as it could be if you had panels on if it. I had because the, the 15 15s yeah. are basically glorified angle brackets and a place to mount the rails because they don't yeah. these, these basically provide no stiffness for the build they just so it's, it's really a, the it, that's it, acrylic i'm assuming yeah. yeah it's really the acrylic that's doing it okay yeah it makes sense and, and it's the interface between them um we were talking with somebody else earlier i mean if you had a one millimeter thick panel you would still get an incredible amount of stiffness yeah not it'd be in, fragile not, in acrylic. It'd be very fragile. Not in this frame, but in the X, X, you know, the X, XZ in this case plane. In the, the you know, the Are you, you have real floppy material sheet metal, but the stiffness is in the from this direction. Yeah. yeah. Are you ever worried about the acrylic heating up and expanding, or? Or is that just not an issue? I've run, uh, I've, so the top hat on my 300ZL is acrylic, and I've run it at 90C for hundreds of hours, and I haven't had a problem. I have I have a little bit of, I, my, it does expand a little when uh, when it heats up, and so I, I get like 
a little bit of a, a tweak in, in, in my top hat. Um, but that doesn't have extrusions, you know, bolting everything together. That's just to keep heat in. So it doesn't okay. have a whole lot of structural rigidity to it. I'm running aluminum panels on, on that machine. This one I'll move to aluminum panels eventually, but I have to design them and get them built from somebody. Yeah. Um, unless that's the way it comes out with some in the meantime. You, I assume you had you cut these on like a, like a CNC or were you using a laser? Um, I, I ordered these from Asumi, cut the size just because they do such a nice job and they mill them. Right, but for the acrylic panels. Oh, the acrylic was done on, uh, Wade did those on uh, on a laser. Okay, on a laser. Uh, and then right. I modified them just with, you know, uh, with drill bits because right. I needed to mount a lot of extra stuff that was never I got a, I got a friend with a, a laser cutter, so now I'm, I'm thinking of a good collaboration I he here. I fiber for these. Okay. I use the fiber laser. Okay. That's that's not my area of expertise, but but it's interesting you mentioned this. Really, the the extrusions really just holding together the panels. The panels are so what's providing the, the strength. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I definitely recommend is is put a backer rail. That that improves stuff so much. Oh, so it's a square, right? It's not open on one side, you're saying? Uh, this, is a, this is a, a little, just a right angle piece of uh, 700 series aluminum. Okay. And um, I just, you know, I just laid it out real carefully with calipers and drilled it and tapped the holes. And so I just got M3s threaded into the, and I just bought that piece of. Oh, uh, oh, a back. Oh, yeah. I see. You're talking about for the X or um, whatever, whichever axis that is. That's I guess. why. That's why. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was gonna ask. So that is that a solid piece of aluminum or is that a tube? It's a it's a, a right angle bracket, so it looks like this. Oh, it's just right angle. Yeah, so okay. here's here's yeah, yeah. your standard. That's the standard one. Just the, which is just the rail. Yeah. Which is stiff enough for until you start going to high acceleration. Yeah. That's actually you know you're right. Like an L L is probably all the strength. Like right now, what I have is I I have like a 2020 piece of aluminum. But that's pretty heavy. An extrusion? Yeah. If you go to a tube, you'll get more stiffness. Really? And, okay. and probably for the same weight or less. All right. If you go, you can also go to carbon fiber. It's just more yeah. expensive. Yeah. You can yeah. get a carbon fiber square tube. Yeah. That, uh, but do, but don't do what a lot of people do, which is like, you know, if they order it from somebody, they mill out all the parts and they and they lose a ton of stiffness by right. milling out pretty parts because they're like, oh, it's already so stiff. Yeah. I actually did it. I, I don't know if I can pull it up now, but I did a on a 3D printing Discord. I did a a, a study on uh, on one of the on one of the parts with the milled out like BZ bot um, your design versus yeah. having it just solid. Right. And the deflection was like an order of magnitude higher. Yeah, because you cut you cut hole. You're ruining the and people yeah, are like yeah, but the structure. loads aren't high. But it, I simulated the loads for like actually a tool head, and the deflections were like. In the multiple millimeters, Ooh, yikes. and you okay. don't see it. I mean, you're never yeah. going to see that while it's happening. But it's like you start doing doing design studies, and you start really seeing how floppy all of this metal is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's why, like, you know, these eventually I'm going to go to double shear. Like, this is just not this is not rigid enough. Uh, so you're saying you're gonna you're gonna have something carry it on the top as well? Is yeah. that what you mean by double steer? Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like the motor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's always whenever whenever I see the the design. I I think when I did look at the rail core design, I was like, uh, it works. Yeah, it's just it could be improved. Right. I'm kind of fascinated with belt tension right now, and um, these you, are these I these lengths I have tuned. I, I, usually what I do is I, I just use like a, a spectroid or something. Yeah, okay. And then, so you're using that approach. And yeah. you need to use, like, you need to know what the length is that you're you're plucking. Right. And then you can calculate your tension based on the, based on the tone. I, I've seen I've seen the video. I tried it on mine. It didn't didn't quite work well, because... you got to figure out what, you know, what frequency is right for your build. You gotta figure out the frequency and then also do you lock so you pretty much have to lock everything. Like you gotta lock the, the carriage and stuff because if you're plucking it and the carriage is moving freely. They have uh I, I don't think that's a problem because if okay. you think about it from an acoustic standpoint, you've got nodes here. Right. So are so your stepper motors on when you're doing that? No. 
Okay. And, and I don't think they need to be. Okay. Because if you put tension here, then this is going to want to turn just as much as that is. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're, okay. you're, I, functionally, I don't think you're going to have a problem with this. Okay. And, and, and your, your, your ability to adjust it finely is going to be an order of magnitude less precise than the error that you're going to account, you know, that you're going to have with those rotating a tiny bit. Okay. So I, I, so I that's, could be wrong, but so I that's the way you use the spectrum. Is it a pretty clean spike or you just, you kind of look in it a bunch of, you might get a couple, but you're going to get one, you know, one okay. primary. All right. Huh. All right. I'll, I'll have to try that again. By the way, I'm, I'm James. James. Can Chase. I video for you for a second? Sure. I've been recording yeah. you. Thank you. Hey, I'm Chase. <laughs> All right, Chase. Pleasure to meet you.